Hello and welcome to another Daily Muppet. In today's video, we're going to talk about the Mace Greenwood situation, talk about the news that is now finally coming out regarding United looking at potentially other midfielders to Sofian Amrabat and who the options might be, including Onana and a couple other names. Uh, we're also going to talk about Maguire, McTominay, some team news, and uh, wrap it up from there. So let's get into it. Okay, so first and foremost, I just want to wrap this up as I put this on uh, Twitter directly, obviously, on Saturday morning. What happened? Last Friday, there were some articles that came out that uh, on the Greenwood situation that talked about there being a delay, which was correct. But at the same time, the way a couple of them were written, unfortunately indicated that the decision was going to be placed onto the women's team. I thought that this seemed incorrect. There were some inconsistencies in the articles. Um, and uh, there were many that were actually fine. I read a, a quite a few other articles. Uh, if I read them by themselves, like from Simon Stone, uh, ESPN, there was three or four other ones I read. And if I had read those by themselves, it would have been okay. I, I, they weren't 100% clear, but it wouldn't have had the same effect as the ones that came out first that had a certain indication. Um, they didn't have a negative effect. And generally, I would never comment negatively on someone else's articles, someone else's pieces, someone else's stuff. Uh, it, but that's that's not really the point. It's not something I generally ever do, like on this on these videos and on my channel, bring up news that's there and clarify my understanding, you know, et cetera, but not really calling things out, nor was I really intending to call someone out specifically or send abuse someone's way, which I want to make sure of. Um, I don't think abuse is justified online in any direction, but it is also you know, a tricky situation, but this isn't a transfer. This wasn't about, you know, this isn't about winning, having information first or anything like that. Um, I went and looked into this because I wanted to get accurate information because the outcome of what had been reported was unfortunately that the women's team were being targeted by the news as people who were responsible for the decision on Mason Greenwood, which I felt was totally incorrect. And that's it. Um, unfortunately, I think I ruffled a few feathers with, with, uh, with doing this, but the information is correct and it was something that needed to be said. And so that's all I can really say about that. Um, I think that there was a, obviously a clear misunderstanding in the stories that got out there, um, in that, you know, the situation was, as I put it on, on Twitter and on, on video, the decision is not being made by the people that they're talking to. The investigation is complete. They're simply informing parties about the decision. And one of those parties includes the women's team. That's it. That's the facts of it. This morning, of course, Lori Whitwell put out a story that essentially confirmed everything that I said. And unfortunately, as well, did indicate that the women's team saw those comments and things. And I was aware of that. I, I knew that too. And that's one of the reasons I looked in this. It's one of the reasons I put that out there. I knew that they were aware of these comments and that unfortunately there was things happening. So um, that's why I put it out there. And uh, that's why I did that. And that's why, you know, usually I never really comment on what someone else is, is saying or doing in a negative manner, except that in this case, there was a really negative outcome that needed to be redress, addressed. And that was the story. So I don't want to talk more about the Greenwood situation until something officially comes out. But as I said on Saturday, uh, the investigation is complete. They're informing key stakeholders, including the women's team, of the findings and outcome of the investigation, and then they will announce the formal decision at a later date. And that's all that there is to it. So let's move on from that. Now, here is the, the big, big thing that, uh, that I've been kind of following up on and talking about for the last few days. Um which is, I think, a, a week or so now, which is that Manchester United are looking into a bigger, 
this is a pejorative term because uh, how do you describe bigger versus smaller with transfers? A bigger signing than Sofian Amrabat. And the names that I listed were obviously one, Chuameni, which I said would be an extremely, like basically zero chance. A lot of dominoes had to fall. One of those being Mbappe going to Madrid, which is not happening. Hence, Chuameni's not being sold. Nothing is happening there. That is a dead deal, as has been clarified by David Ornstein. And that was one that I think I said many times, you need like a million dominoes to fall for that to happen. Something discussed early in the window, very unlikely. The other names that I gave were Onana. And uh, and I think I gave one other, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But I talked about, um, uh, oh, it was Lavia, but he's definitely going between uh, Chelsea and Liverpool. Uh, Amadou Onana from Everton. United are interested. As I said, they've been reopening and re-looking at the potential for this. It was someone they had interest in earlier in the year, previously reported by Laurie Whitwell at The Athletic back in early June that they had some interest in more than two months ago. And my understanding in the last week was they were kind of reopening the interest into this and reevaluating the potential of going for Amadou Onana. Now, why would they do that? Well, uh, a couple of things that I have been told or that I understand about the situation, which is that um, as far as I gather, Kabi Mainu is being brought in to be a six. That's the way that he's viewed by the club. Somebody who can bring the ball up from deep, under pressure, press resistant, turn, get into spaces and spread the ball around. That's how he played in the first game in preseason. Um, he's obviously, you know, there's obviously a flexibility here, but somebody like that, you know, essentially not too dissimilar to, from a Frankie de Jong type of player. And that's how Kabi Mainu was viewed. Scott McTominay has been told he would take, he if, if Mainu was healthy, he wasn't going to play virtually at all. Um, and Scott McTominay was also the six last year. That's how Eric Ten Hag deployed him as Casemiro's rotation. And um, uh, so Scott McTominay is set to get some minutes with Kabi Mainu out. Not today, but in general, right? But... What that kind of tells you for the long term is that if they see Mainu has a competent six, then potentially there would be more of a signing in the in the vein of an eight or an eight who can cover six and still Sofian Amrabat fits that. So what I've been hearing to be clear was they obviously are totally informed on the Sofian Amrabat situation. They've had discussions. They know his agent. They know this. They know that. It has not yet progressed. And this was to be the key week I think I mentioned last week where I said, if it does not move this week, then they're evaluating these other targets. And I think that they are. Just last night, I was speaking with someone about this. Um, I was saying, look, I, I keep getting told they're looking at further targets. And I don't think Chuameni is a realistic one, obviously, at this point in time. So who could it be? Um, Onana is a name I've heard many times. And I was told, yes, it is a very valid name for Manchester United. They're interested in him. They've looked at him before. They've even, even approached about kind of the costs before. And um, they think there could be a deal that could be done there. Um, he's viewed as someone who can raise the physical floor of the team. Um, and, uh, you know, especially off the bench, he's 21, high potential, somebody who long-term could absolutely be a starter. He has that qualities, someone who could bridge the gap between Casemiro and Bruno, but it potentially also provide coverage, things like that in the future. Uh, obviously more expensive. And so the issue is, can they make the sales to afford him? And this is where it's been a little bit hazy. Do they want to bring in two midfielders? Do they want to bring in Amrabat and Onana? I don't know. That's a lot of money. Um, so it's a little confusing here. Obviously, for that, there's no way without selling McTominay. But the exact details aren't clear. But the fact of the matter is that they're very interested in Amadou Onana. They're talking about it. They're considering it. It's a deal that I would be very interested in. He's a really great player. There's a lot of good analysis out there. But one I would certainly keep on the table for now, it's going to be a matter of cost, right? That's going to be the key things. And how it ties into McTominay, I'm not sure, but we'll talk about that in a minute. He's not the only name. Um, interestingly, I've been told that, you know, I, this, this, there was a report on this in terms of scouting, that United would look at uh, Kefren Florem from Nice when they were also scouting Todibo last week absolutely is a true name as well that they are observing and looking at. When you look at the profiles of Amrabat, Onana, and, and Thuram, they there's a lot of overlap. All of them are very physical players who are not just physical players, right? They're not just like bulldog players. They're physical players who have a lot of other good qualities on the ball, 
technically and things like that as well. Um, strong defensively, but these are options and you can see there's kind of a bit of an overlapping profile. So they may feel like any of these will work for what they're trying to do, especially if Kabi Manu is viewed as a deeper midfielder, which I think he is. But these are players I've been told to keep an eye on at this point in time. Players who are strong on the ball, good carrying it, could bridge the gap between Casemiro and Bruno, could play alongside Kabi Mainu in the future. Um, these are these are players to to look at. And and I think players like Thuram and Onan are viewed as a higher potential than perhaps Sofian Amrabat. So wrapping that up, Manchester United have been interested in potentially going beyond Amrabat for the midfielder signing. And the links to Amadou Anan are totally true. It's one they've been evaluating, one I've been talking about. It's going to be about cost and expense. Another potential name would be Thuram from Nice, who they have obviously scouted and there's been links with before. Now, when and how a move will be made is obviously going to be a little bit tricky. There's not a ton of time left in the window and it's going to be as well potentially about sales. But it's not ruled out that they could make a move before selling McTominay, but obviously that would mean they're not getting Amrabat at the same time. The Amrabat situation is ready, but has not yet moved. So I think after today's game, in the next few days, we're going to see that trigger. What happens? Do we move forward on one of these deals? Do we line up all of them and then pull the trigger? And then uh, and then we'll see. But they're very strongly looking at a midfield signing, and it could be more than Sophia and Amrabat. Harry Maguire, uh, the situation with West Ham, obviously there's been a lot of rumors kind of flying around back and forth. Has he, you know, is the deal off? Has he rejected the move? Things like that. Um, the simplicity of this situation is is and remains how I've, I've heard it, um, which is that Harry Maguire's move to West Ham is still on. Um, there, he hasn't rejected the move. He's willing to move. The issue remains around the severance from United, uh, the payoff package, right? And the replacement. And that's been the same as it was since last week. And, um, you know, and basically it's a little tricky. Like I'll say this, I, I understand that there is a little bit of, um, there's a little bit of pressure on the situation. I understand that. Um, there's obviously a lot of good sources, West Ham side and such that you can listen to ex ex uh, employee and all of that that have good information from West Ham's side of it and some of the things that have come out there have been you know there's a little pressure on a situation the holdup is on Manchester United side the issue is this we have a Monday game it's a pain in the ass there's four center backs we don't have we have a little bit of an injury crisis we don't have any backup goalkeepers Malasia isn't healthy so if you needed Shaw to cover center back you have to play Alvaro Fernandez you don't want to have to do that. Um, and if McGuire goes without replacement at the moment, you're kind of in trouble. And the replacement is tricky too because the move for Benjamin Pavard is a little bit difficult. United want to spend 25 to 30 million euros on Benjamin Pavard. Uh, as you're seeing from reports out of Bayern, they want way more and they're not really willing to sell him right now. That makes it tricky. Todibo's a bit more expensive. They They... It, it it's there's a little pressure on this and this is normal this is kind of this is not unusual it's not necessarily bad west ham really want to wrap this up united are saying we've got a game today you know on monday or today whatever whenever this conversation is occurring right um we've got a game on monday and we don't have a replacement after today it's expected to accelerate but it's a little bit messy it's a little bit messy west ham i know are putting pressure on united uh are trying to get the deal done uh, as well, but they're trying to line up a replacement. So a lot of things are going to have to move in the next few days because they need a Maguire replacement and they need a midfielder. So again, nothing is off on this deal. It's been about the severance and replacement and it's still being worked on. There's a little bit of tension, but it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong as of yet. Uh, Scott McTominay, as I understand it, you know, obviously that bid from West Ham was turned down, um, but United do think that there's more interest in McTominay, and that's one of the reasons they turned down that 30 million pound bid. They want to, um, he's, you know, they're going to need someone for a little bit and with, with Kabi Mainu out. So maybe very late in the window, they'd like to make this a, a switch or a move here closer to Kabi Mainu returning, which 
He, you know, he was injured, what, mid-July, late July. I think he'll be back end of September, maybe early October. Not too bad, but you've got that month in there. And um, so I think that the, the situation with McTominay, as I understand, is United believe there's more interest in him, um, including and potentially from Everton. And I would watch something that really interesting happened with this is that tomorrow United have a close score game with Everton. Everton have been kind of struggling to bring in um, players. And I just wonder, maybe this is the Muppet in me, but maybe there's a logic to this. If a closed door game on a Tuesday, the day after a United game, isn't a little bit of, we've got a lot of youth and fringe players who are kind of not yet gone. Maybe there's somebody they want that could help grease the wheels for this Onana thing too, okay? And I wouldn't put that past the possibility of it if there's dialogue between the clubs on this, including McTominay. Have McTominay play in that game Hannibal, Palistri, you know, there's players that could play in this game that would, um, you know, that could potentially be kind of in the shop window for Everton who need some signings. I don't know exactly what they need. I haven't really been following them, but I would just consider that. Regardless, United think McTominay that there's more interest in him. They kind of need him at the moment. So as well, they don't really want to sell without replacement. So if they could line up a deal for a player they think could properly replace McTominay, then um, I think they'd let him go. But I think they're looking to get offers, potentially um, Newcastle, Villa, and potentially Everton. And so, you know, it's that's something to keep an eye on as well, the McTominay situation. Like I said, it's a little hazy, and it's gotten a little hazier because United are looking beyond Amrabat. They could always fall back and just make the move for Amrabat right now. But I think that they're looking at the potential for going for more. Um, maybe signing a, a player like, you know, more than that, and then potentially selling McTominay and maybe even bringing a second signing in at that point in time. So keep an eye on this. United think they're still interested in McTominay. He could still go. He's still set to have a very limited role this year, and that could very much tie into how this works. But, you know, some things have to start shifting. Some things have to start moving there. There was obviously talk of, of a, as well in terms of outs of the Van de Beek move falling through to Associate Dad. Apparently still in, in talks, but not, you know, not done. Um, and uh, some things to sort out there. So it's an interesting situation how this all ties into McTominay and Van de Beek, but there's still potentials and a good chance that they depart this window. Moving on to team news and predictions. Um, I know what the team is. I know what United will be lining up with this evening. Obviously, this video will be coming out around four hours, three hours before the team news officially. So I do not want to put it on here um, because I don't think that's right. And uh, But at the same time, I will say, obviously, one of the things is that, yes, that Lons game is going to give a very, very strong indication of what the team will be. And, um, and it's what you'd expect. Personally, what would I do if I was if I was lining up? I think I've said this many times. I put out that team, but I play Wambasaka and Sancho. That would be what I would play. I think Sancho's had a really good preseason. I think Garnacho's a better game changer off the bench than Jaden Sancho. And um and I think that, you know, uh breaking down that low block, the creativity of Sancho would help. I understand every kind of argument this this isn't a and, and one thing I want to be clear. I don't want people to put down one player to prop up another with these choices. When we've got players like Dallin and Wambasaka competing, and we've got this front four of Sancho, Anthony, Rashford, Garnacho, nobody has to be put down for the other one to be good. I think they're all really good options. I would play the same team as Lons, but with Sancho and um, and Wambasaka. That would be my choice. Um, so I'm interested to see what you all think will be happen and what, what you think should be the selection. I think the first team really has picked itself outside of those two positions. I think it really has. And those two positions are the only questions and where there might be some changes. So um, that's pretty interesting. I don't remember feeling like that settled most of the time last year, obviously. Um, obviously, once Rasmus Hoyland comes in, that's going to get a little more complicated especially up front, but in a good way because you want a lot of options and you want rotation there. And obviously once a midfielder is signed, it's going to get a little more complicated as well with rotation. But again, that's something that you want. So um, I'm looking forward to it. I think United are, are I think United are going to, are planning to start pretty, pretty much on the front foot today. And I think that, um, 
it should go well. So that's what I've got for today's video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications on, and I will see you in the next video.